2019, Beetlejuice makes headlines with its mysterious great dimming, and scientists theorize that Beetlejuice is approaching the supernova explosion phase. 2023, observations reveal that a massive dust cloud ejected by Beetlejuice caused the dimming. 2025, we finally lay eyes on the stellar companion that orbits Beetlejuice, and its time too is limited. In the recent past, several papers have proposed that a small, close binary companion might be responsible for Betelgeuse's periodic dimming, predicting that the best time to observe this object would be in December 2024. This is where it gets tricky. Betelgeuse is so massive and bright that spotting a smaller, fainter object right next to it is not easy. That was when Steve Howell, a scientist at NASA Ames Research Center, and a team of astrophysicists decided to bring in a game changer. Allo Peak, a speckle imager mounted on the Gemini North Telescope to help them finally crack the case. What makes it unique is its speckle imaging ability, a kind of astronomical imaging technique that uses very short exposure times to freeze out the distortions that are caused by Earth's atmosphere. This technique enables high resolution which when combined with the light-collecting power of Gemini North's 8.1-meter mirror, allowed for Betelgeuse's faint companion to be directly detected for the first time ever. This glowing orange orb is Betelgeuse, and this faint blue streak is its newly discovered buddy. Betelgeuse, which means Hand of the Giantess in Arabic, now officially has a companion that a team of astronomers has proposed naming Sawarha, which means her bracelet. Personally, I can't think of a better name to honor the star that orbits Betelgeuse. Upon this discovery, Howell and his team analyzed the companion star's light to determine its characteristics. And what they found aligned perfectly with previous predictions for Betelgeuse. The study papers have been published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters and are linked in the description below. They found that the companion star is six magnitudes fainter than Betelgeuse in the optical wavelength range. It has an estimated mass of around 1.5 times that of the Sun, and it is a hot blue-white star orbiting the red giant at a distance equivalent to four times the distance between Earth and the Sun, fairly close for binary stars. That means it exists within the extended atmosphere of Betelgeuse. The team also suggests that this star hasn't started burning hydrogen in its core yet, the process that typically marks a star's main sequence phase. As a result, the Betelgeuse system now consists of two stars which are at the opposite ends of their life cycles, even though they formed around the same time. But this delay doesn't mean that Betelgeuse's companion is in for a long life. We're certain that Betelgeuse will eventually explode in a cataclysmic supernova though the exact timing remains a mystery. After all, though Betelgeuse is only around 10 million years old, the fact that it is 700 times the size of our sun means it has burned through most of its nuclear fuel much faster than our 4.6 billion year old star. In this scenario, the companion star faces two grim fates, neither of which looks promising. First, the immense gravity of Betelgeuse could pull the smaller star into it consuming it in a cannibalistic event that might occur within the next 10,000 years. Alternatively, Betelgeuse could explode before the companion is fully consumed. This could disrupt the companion's orbit, potentially accelerating its demise or altering its path altogether. So yeah, neither outcome bodes well for the companion star. But in the meantime, astronomers will work to gain more answers. In November 2027, we will get another look at the Stellar Companion when it achieves maximum separation from Betelgeuse. Rest assured, the discovery of this smaller, fainter star is nothing short of remarkable. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. By the year 600 BCE, the pyramids of Giza had already stood for over 2,000 years, silently witnessing the rise of human civilization, growing in rapid and diverse ways. It was during this time that our fascination with the stars began to turn into a study. 
The Babylonians recorded the movements of celestial bodies like the sun, moon, and planets and developed a calendar that could predict lunar and solar eclipses. And it was during this time that a star, 2600 light years away, erupted in a dramatic explosion. Now, 2600 years later, we are going to witness that explosion in the night sky. Fascinating, isn't it? Imagine looking up at the night sky and noticing a bright new star where none had been before. This was the experience of Burchard, the abbot of Erzberg in Germany, over 800 years ago, when he observed a faint star that for a time shone with great light. The star he saw was T, Coronae Borealis, a variable star in the constellation Corona Borealis, also known as the Northern Crown. A variable star is a star that appears to change brightness from Earth's perspective over time. TCRB is 2,600 light years from Earth meaning that the events we observe today actually occurred 2,600 years ago. Now, during the prime of their lives, most stars are powered by nuclear fusion reactions deep inside their cores. However, Coronae Borealis is well past its prime and is now a stellar remnant known as a white dwarf. But Coronae Borealis is not alone. It's a rare and fascinating binary star system where it's locked with its stellar companion in a cosmic dance. The primary star is a white dwarf, a remnant of a once massive star that has exhausted its nuclear fuel and collapsed into a dense, Earth-sized object. This white dwarf, although seemingly quiet, harbors an immense gravitational pull, drawing in material from its companion star, a red giant, bloated and cool, shedding its outer layers as it nears the end of its life. This mass transfer is the critical piece of the puzzle in understanding why Coronae Borealis is known as a recurrent nova. Yes, every 80 years, T. Coronae Borealis puts on a show for us here on Earth. As the white dwarf draws off material from the red giant, it gradually accumulates on its surface. Over decades, this process leads to the buildup of a critical mass of hydrogen on the white dwarf's surface. Once enough hydrogen has been gathered, a powerful thermonuclear reaction ignites, a runaway fusion event that causes the star to explode in a spectacular nova. When this happens, the energy release makes TCRB shine 1,500 times brighter than usual, making it visible to the naked eye in the night sky. The last such explosion occurred in 1946, and as we pass the 80-year mark, the world eagerly anticipates the coming eruption. When TCRB goes nova, the explosion releases an enormous amount of energy, blasting the accumulated material into space at high speeds. This creates a shell of gas that expands outward, and the system temporarily becomes one of the brightest objects in the sky. After the explosion subsides, the process starts all over again, as the white dwarf continues to pull in material, repeating the cycle. But how are we so sure that we are going to witness it soon? TCRB's previous two eruptions in 1866 and 1946 exhibited similar patterns. Approximately a decade before each explosion, the star's brightness increased slightly, reaching what is known as a high state, followed by a brief dimming or dip about a year before the eruption. The star entered its high state in 2015, and the pre-eruption dip was detected in March 2023, which has put astronomers on alert. Once Coronae Borealis erupts, the peak brightness will be fleeting, lasting only a few hours. Within a week, the star will dim significantly, requiring binoculars to observe it. It's highly likely that an amateur astronomer will be the first to spot the eruption of the star and notify the professional astronomy community. During its peak brightness, the nova will be visible to the naked eye, though binoculars or a small telescope will offer a more detailed view. Despite not reaching the intensity of the brightest stars or planets, the nova will be a remarkable and memorable sight for sky watchers and amateur astronomers alike. And more than anything, it is kinda a once-in-a-lifetime cosmic event. 